this is the plate we're going to be using for the integumentary system, which is our skin. If you notice over here, we're going to have uh, three major layers that constitute our skin. The top layer is what we call the epidermis. The middle layer is dermis. And the bottom layer, which I can draw a line right over here, would be the hypodermis. Always remember to break down the words. So hypo meaning under, and epi meaning on top. Therefore, the epidermis would be this top layer right over here, and hypodermis, the bottom layer right over here. If you break down the terms, it makes it easier for you to understand what we're talking about. So let's look into more details, the epidermis, which is the top layer on the next figure. Here we can see in more detail the epidermis. The epidermis is going to go all the way from the surface of our skin down over here to this cell layer. So all of this constitutes the epidermis. Now, we know that the epidermis can be made up of either five cell layers or four cell layers, five in thick skin. So therefore, the palms of your hand and the soles of your feet and the rest of the body will contain thin skin. So I can tell you that this um, template here, this plate is um, made up of or is representing thin skin. And the reason why I know this is thin skin is because it has these structures here which are your hair, and we do not have hair in the palms of our hand and soles of our feet, right? So luckily, that's the case, or else we would be looking like werewolves, right? And therefore, we only have four different uh, cell layers in the epidermis. So let's start from the bottom, because that's where we usually start. So the bottom layer here is the stratum basale, Stratum basale receives this name because it's the layer of cells that's really attached to the basal lamina. It can also receive the name of stratum germinativum because it contains the stem cells, which are the ones that are going to germinate and transform into keratinocytes. So stratum basale, first layer, is the dark blue, and it contains um, your stem cells. Then we're going to go to the second layer, which is what we call the stratum spinosum. Now, if you look at the stratum spinosum, it is made up of several cell layers. We can actually have five to seven different cell layers. And then the next layer is going to be this layer of cells right over here. So I'm putting a line right in the middle of the cells which is your stratum granulosum. Now, how do I know that this is your stratum granulosum? So main characteristic of the stratum granulosum is that it's the last cell layers where the cells are still alive. So this means that these cells here have to be round. If you look over here, you can see how they're round. They're gonna contain nucleus right here in the middle. Therefore, they look like they are alive. And if you look over here, you're going to see how the cells in the stratum granulosum are a little bit bigger than the cells here in the stratum spinosum. So that's how we can differentiate, not only with the number of cells or number of layers that are forming these um, cells, but also um, how uh, the size of the cells. Okay, so really important for you to be able to differentiate. And for our sake, we're going to say that the stratum granulosum contains only one cell layer, but it can actually contain up from one to two cell layers. Okay, But for us, we're just going to say that it's one. So because I can't erase this anymore, this, these circles anymore, we're going to transfer over here to this side. So this would be your stratum granulosum right over here. And these from here down would be your stratum spinosum and the dark blue stratum basale. So if you know all this, and you know that this template here, this 
um, plate only has four cell layers, then you should identify everything above the stratum granulosum as what? As stratum corneum, okay? So even though it has two different colorings over here, you can see this one is sort of skin colored lighter, and this one is blue. Everything is stratum corneum because you should know that everything above the stratum granulosum is stratum corneum. And if you notice that these cells, you're going to see how they are flatter. So they're flatter in shape compared to the stratum granulosum, and they don't have a nucleus. Okay, so that means that these cells above the stratum granulosum are dead cells. So now you should go back to your lecture um, notes or, and maybe look in your book. Why do you think that these cells present above the stratum granulosum look dead and why do they die out? Okay. Now this um, picture is a good picture to show you an overview of all the layers again. So you can have the epidermis here, the dermis, and the hypodermis down here. Now, what you should know about the dermis is that it is made up of two different layers. You have what we call the top layer is what? The papillary layer, and the bottom layer is the reticular layer. How do you know which one is on top and which one is on the bottom? P comes before R, remember? That's how you will know. Now it's hard on this um, model for us to differentiate where the papillary layer ends and where the reticular layer begins, but you should just uh, think that the top half is papillary, the bottom half is reticular. Of course, I'm not gonna tag something here in the middle because you won't know which one it is and I wanna test your knowledge, so I won't tag something right in the middle. And what differentiates the layer is the type of connective tissue. So the papillary layer has loose connective tissue. The reticular layer has dense connective tissue. And on this model, we can't really see the difference. Okay, so just remember top half papillary layer, bottom half reticular layer. Other structures that we can see on the dermis is that you're gonna have your sweat gland right over here. So this is your sweat gland. This is going to be your sebaceous gland. Now your sweat gland will have a duct because glands produce secretion. In case of the sweat gland, it's gonna produce a watery secretion that's going to produce your sweat and it's gonna take it all the way up to the surface of your skin through this duct over here and the tip of it will be your sweat pore. So the opening in the middle where the sweat comes out is a sweat pore. Your sebaceous gland, which is this purple structure right over here, is going, also going to contain ducts. And you can see them coming off right over here. And the ducts are going to come here and release. Since these are sebaceous glands, you're going to release the oily content to your hair. So that's why sometimes we have oily hair, because our sebaceous gland is producing a lot of oil. So since we're talking about hair, we should um, break down the hair structures. So we're going to have, starting right over here, all of this is what we consider the hair shaft. So it's the part that comes out of our body, but it also starts before that. So right over here at the level of the sebaceous gland, that's where you have the hair shaft, and all the rest is what we consider the hair root. So don't think that the hair shaft is only the part that's coming out of our body, okay? Then down here, we're going to have what we call the hair papula, which is the structure here where you're going to have the blood vessels coming into the hair to nurture the hair. So that, that white structure is what we call the hair papula. The last part of the hair that we can talk about is your erector pili muscle, which is this muscle right over here. And every single hair in our 
body has an erector pili muscle. Okay, it's the smallest muscle in our body. Our last figure is good because it's going to show us a couple of receptors, so nerve receptors. We have two of them. We have this top one over here, which is called a tactile corpuscle or a masoner's corpuscle. And tactile, that's exactly what it's telling us, so it's for touch, and that's why it's located further up on the skin compared to the other one, which is called a fascinian corpuscle or laminated corpuscle. So it doesn't matter which term you use as long as you know that one is um, more for touch, which is, which is the top one, and this bottom one is more for pressure, so it's located further down. Okay, so top one can either be called tactile corpuscle or masoner's corpuscle, and this bottom one over here is called the bacinian corpuscle or laminated, corpus laminated corpuscle. So that's uh, the two nerve receptors that we have on the skin. And the last thing is that the hypodermis is going to contain these adipose cells over here. So all of these are adipose cells within the hypodermis. You can have a little bit going out into the dermis, but most of the adipose cells are located in your hypodermis.